Did you know there are seven different forms of butterbeer in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter? Are you serious, Molly? Oh, I'm serious. As serious as one of Professor Finn's lectures. And today we are going to get all seven across both sections of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter to figure out which ones you should let slither into your mouths and maybe which ones are more of a griffin don't. Be sharing some other Harry Potter tips, tricks, and trivia along the way. I hope you're ready. I hope you're hungry. It's going to be pretty cute, Liz. starting our Butterbeer Adventures off in Diagon Alley. This is the second added section of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This is located in the Universal Studios Florida theme park. This is where you will see the dragon breathing fire. You've got Harry Potter and the Escape from Brigods, as well as some of the best shops and eats in the Wizarding World. And we are going to kick this baby off with the classic, with the original, the liquid Butterbeer. Here it is, a classic Butterbeer. This may be known as cold throughout the lands, but it is your liquid butterbeer with, of course, your signature foam topping. Cheers. Oh, it is so good. Now, the best way I can describe the flavor of butterbeer is kind of some kind of butterscotch toffee caramel flavor, and then the foam topping tastes like a vanilla cupcake. So it's incredibly, incredibly sweet. I'm going to consume seven things today but I will do it for science. For me, I really enjoy the classic, the liquid, the cold, whatever you want to call it, because one, this is the one I imagine the characters drinking in the films. They talk about it being a liquid. Two, this is the original one that they made here, that they had the chef make up here and was tested by everybody and was approved to be the official butterbeer uh, of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And three, while yes, it is incredibly, incredibly sweet, it is slightly less sweet than some of the other variations we're gonna try later. I think that's because of the soda. I'm not 100% sure. Also, it's worth noting that no butterbeer is alcoholic, so anybody in the family can join this. Anyone of all ages can drink butterbeer. If you'd like it to be alcoholic, you can ask for a shot of fire whiskey. They cannot add it in there for you, but they can sell you both things if you're of age, and you can combine them yourselves if you'd like to make it boozy. You can acquire classic butterbeer in several locations throughout both of the two Wizarding World lands. Here in Diagon Alley, you can get it at the restaurant, the Leaky Cauldron, as well as the two kind of drink stands, the Hopping Pot, where I got mine, as well as the Fountain of Fair Fortune. Over at Hogsmeade, you can get it again at the restaurant there, the Three Broomsticks, as well as there's a few butterbeer carts, and you can get it at the bar there called the Hogshead. I will be ranking each butterbeer treat on a scale from one to nine and three quarters. And to kick things off, classic butterbeer, I am going to award it a Harry Potter, which is about an eight on this scale. It's classic, it's dependable, some people are going to love it, but it may not be your favorite, although where would we be without it? While I sip on my butterbeer, I'm going to head into one of the shops here. This is Globus Mundi, which is a travel agency in the Wizarding World. And I feel like this shop is often underrated. It's far less crowded than the ones on the main stretch of Diagon Alley. And I think they have some really cool merch as well as some gags in here. I love this kind of postcard series they did where it's advertising the different locations in the Wizarding World. You've got a Hogsmeade one. You've got a Diagon Alley one. I wish the Diagon Alley was a different color than gray. I don't look great in gray, but I really like that imagery. If you look up on the ceiling, you'll see that they're basically showing off the station wagon of Broom. So you've got multiple people that can sit on those as well as you've got time clocks from around the world showing you what time it is in different places, both real and fictional. Oh my gosh. Do I need this $200 Slytherin suitcase? No, right? Although maybe that's just a fun little shop that doesn't get a lot of traffic the way the others do, so check it out if you're in the Wizarding World. But now we're on to treat number two. Now before you ask, yes, we are going to take a stop at Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor. At some point in this video, we got to get ourselves some soft serve butterbeer ice cream, but it's very warm, the line is long, and I'm going to come back to Diagon Alley in a little bit during one of my favorite times to visit. So for now, we are headed to the Leaky Cauldron. The Leaky Cauldron is kind of a quick service, hybrid table service restaurant because you do order at the counter or you can mobile order and then they bring your food to you. I mobile ordered. I wasn't sure how busy it would be right now. I recommend doing that just to save yourself some time in line. And now I'll find a table. 
I just love being in these restaurants. I talked about this in the potato throwdown video. You can check that one out where Alan and I ate nothing but potatoes all day in Universal. But the feeling in these restaurants just really does feel like you are in another universe. I specifically remember scenes from the books and the movies of the Weasleys and Harry and Hermione and just hanging out in the Leaky Cauldron and I just love being in here. Here we go, butterbeer treat number two, the butterbeer potted cream and look at this cute little container it comes in. Look at that. A little jar, some potted cream, it's got a little gel on the top of it, that's caramel, a little dollop. Looks like pudding consistency. Scotch, but it's missing something. I think it's missing the vanilla. I don't think there's enough of that vanilla flavor, which is the foam topping on the butterbeer drinks. So it's mostly just like really, really thick butterscotch pudding, and it's like cloyingly sweet. On the butterbeer scale, I'm gonna give this one a Hagrid, which is about a five on our scale today. It's thicker than I thought it would be. It's bigger than I thought it would be, but and it means well. But, much like Hagrid accidentally spilling the tea that he's not supposed to, it did make some mistakes. I can't say that this one is what I'm going to recommend getting, especially when there's so many other amazing butterbeer and not butterbeer treats in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Uh, but if you've tried it and like it, let us know. And we're off to Hogsmeade to try some other things. made it to a very peopley Hogsmeade and the line for Butterbeer isn't that long so I'm gonna jump in line here and get our next treat. Here in Hogsmeade you'll find Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey which takes place inside Hogwarts, Flight of the Hippogriff, the Three Broomsticks as well as a bunch more shops and other eats uh, but of course we are here for one thing and one thing only today Butterbeer. Frozen Butterbeer is up next. This is probably the most popular of all the Butterbeers, maybe because it's delicious, maybe because it's Florida and it's a million degrees all the time. So what would be better than a nice frozen treat? Much like the classic Butterbeer, the Frozen can be purchased many places. You can get it at both the Butterbeer carts here. On this side, you can get it at the Three Broomsticks. You can also get it in the Hogshead, the bar. You can get it in Diagon Alley at the Leaky Cauldron, Found a Fair Fortune, and Hoppy Pot. It is so good. Wow. I forgot how delicious it is. Because I normally get other varieties. First thing right off the bat, this is absolutely the sweetest one I've had so far. It is far sweeter than that pudding clotted cream was, and it's definitely sweeter than the uh, cold classic as well. So if you're not a sweets person, this is probably the one you want to steer away from. Mm. Brain freeze. Wow, I really can't stop drinking this stuff long enough to tell you about it. My stomach's gonna hurt later. On the butterbeer scale, I am going to award this one a Dobby because it's very, very sweet. Almost too sweet for its own good. And that's about an 8.5. Now again, while I personally would rather drink the regular one because it's less sweet and because it throws back to the films in the story, I think this one's the most popular and for good reason. If most people are going to try one form of butterbeer, this should probably be it. Just don't do what I did the first time I came to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter on my college program. My roommate and I got one of these. We were taking it through the queue at Forbidden Journey and it was moving much faster than we thought it would. And we ended up having to basically chug the entire thing and then ride Forbidden Journey. And if you've ever ridden Forbidden Journey, you know how nauseating that ride is even without chugging an entire sweet concoction beforehand. So ride Forbidden Journey first. Frozen butter, we are done. Also, look at this. You ever see 
these little doors at the bottom of the trash cans. That's so it's easier for the house elves to empty them because it's house elf height. Is that not adorable? I did a whole video on a bunch of details of Easter eggs and stuff like that that you can check out. And while I did finish my third butterbeer, I'm gonna need a break. I'm gonna need a butterbeer break before we get treat number four. So let's pop into a shop. Popped into Owl Post. This is where you can buy one stationery, apparel, robes, all kinds of goodies. There's a few things I like to check out while I'm here. First of all, they have new holiday cards I haven't seen yet. Happy Christmas. Um, cute. And all I want for Christmas. And then it's got a snitch and a sweater and a broom. Oh my gosh. Those are cute. They're $8 each, so maybe not ones you want to send to everyone on your list, but a special someone. Other than that, I always like to point out these cards, and they've gotten some new ones in since I was last doing this. Um, these are by the graphic artist Mina Lima, who did all of the graphic design work for the film. So anything you see with graphics, whether it be a candy or a drink or a newspaper or a textbook, they did all of it. And you can buy these prints of their artwork here, uh, and they're only $6. They range a little bit, might have be a little bit more if they're a little fancier, but they're a great take home because they're inexpensive and uh, if you're like me you can frame them and put them in your home which I love as a little unique souvenir. I also always like to check in on the monster book of monsters to see how he's always oh, sleeping that's good. Oh this is new and kind of fun. It's a map where you pop out these circles and in it you put these coins which are the markers on the ground for the different spells. Let's see they are eight dollars each. I wonder how much the map is. Um, but that reminds me of, did anyone have when they were younger, When remember when the, all the states had quarters that came out and there was like a map that you could put the quarters in? I had one of those. I didn't finish it. I gave up. But that's what this is giving me the vibe of. All right, I got to get out of here before I buy more Slytherin merchandise I don't need. And it's time to head to the Three Broomsticks. But I'm deciding to take my own advice and avoid the restaurants during peak meal time. It's like 6.30 right now. And while the line doesn't seem like it's that long, it actually extends inside and it takes a pretty long time. So I'm gonna head into the Hog's Head instead, which is the bar that's attached. And while it has its own queue, it's much shorter than the one for the Three Broomsticks. I've been here a million times and I'm hearing that there are people talking upstairs in the inn. It's very entertaining. The Hog's Head is the pub attached to the Three Broomsticks. It's a grab-and-go situation. Here you can get a lot of different beers, including those Harry Potter exclusive beers like the Hog's Head Brew, the Dragon Scale. You can also get all three forms of drinkable butter here, so you're hot, you're frozen, and you're cold. You can get other English beers. They also, not a lot of people realize this, have alcohol and can make you something custom. They do not serve soda in the Wizarding World, but if you wanted like a vodka and the pear juice or something like that, they could do that for you. You probably guessed that inside the Hogshead, I grabbed the last drinkable kind of butter beer for the video, the hot butter beer. This is actually my personal favorite form of butterbeer, even though I live in Orlando, which is basically like living in a sauna at all times. Hot butterbeer used to only be available during the holiday seasons, but now it's available year round, so you can drink it in the middle of July if you want to. And I have. Cheers. Mm. It's like drinking a warm cup of milk. It's amazing. Now, it's my preferred time to drink this with Hogsmeade or Diagon Alley's all decorated for Christmas. Absolutely it is. This one you can get a few places. It's a little bit more limited than uh, the frozen or the cold, but you can get it at Three Broomsticks, Leaving Cauldron, as well as Hogshead. They may also sometimes have it at the Hopping Pot or Found a Fair Fortune, but you can't get it out at the carts. It's just like being hugged with magic and sugar. Hot butter beer is sweeter than the regular. I think it's probably on par with sweetness as the frozen. Maybe a little bit less sweet just because something about being cold makes it feel sweeter. Maybe because you can drink more of it faster. But all the butter beer has this signature special proprietary recipe for the topping. So you're going to have that vanilla cupcake topping and then it just tastes like warm butterscotch underneath. On the butterbeer scale, this 
hard because this is my personal favorite, but it's also like, which one should you drink? All right, for my personal butterbeer scale, this is a Molly Weasley, which is about a nine, because it's like drinking a warm hug. And isn't Molly Weasley just like a warm hug? Remember in Goblet of Fire when Cedric dies and Harry's processing his trauma and then Molly Weasley hugs him and he realizes it's all he needed was to be hugged by a mother and he, he says that it's the first time he was hugged by a mother that he could remember. <laughs> anyway, this drink tastes like that, but happy. Ooh, Death Eaters are almost out. I waited to shoot this in, later in the day so that I could see the Death Eaters. They're one of my favorite things in Wizarding World. What shall we do before, though? Oh, is that Hogwarts so beautiful? I just love it. With the music swelling right here, it's oh, amazing. What I'm gonna do now for a few minutes is peek in these windows to see if I can find any new Easter eggs. A lot of people ask how I know about all the Easter eggs or how my brain holds all this information in it. And all I have to say is, a lot of the Easter eggs, I just walk around and look in windows. And as far as all of the information about Harry Potter in my brain, I don't know what to tell you. It's been in there since I was a child. I'm just glad it's useful for my job. One thing that does help is having anxiety and then listening to the Harry Potter audiobooks to comfort you in that anxiety. Um, so basically, you're always listening to one. So that'll help too. Like, take a look in this window right here outside Tomes and Scrolls. You'll notice that one of the books that the spell book, Beetle of the Bard, is on uh, is on Secrets of the Darkest Art. That's a book I didn't recognize for a long time as anything special. And then during one of my listens, I remembered that Hermione learns about how to make a horcrux from the book that she kind of steals from Dumbledore's office after he dies. Oh, um, spoiler alert. And that is how Tom Riddle figured out how to make horcruxes. And that book is sitting right here. More butterbeer. The last two butterbeers I need in this park are at Honeydukes and the Three Broomsticks. Headed into the Three Broomsticks now. I've been watching the line and it's finally gone down a decent amount. This line can be deceiving because it looks not that long outside, but there's actually a whole switchback once you get in here. Unfortunately, they don't have mobile order here right now. It does tend to vary, but Leaky Cauldron does have mobile order. So it's a little faster over there. The Three Broomsticks is the hybrid quick service table service restaurant here on this side. Now the Leaky Cauldron serves a little bit more of traditional English fare. Think bangers and mash, toad and hole. And this one serves more of a rotisserie style feast. So you're going to get roasted chicken and ribs. Both serve fish and chips, which is my personal favorite. But the menus are slightly varied. Butterbeer treat number five is our first of the ice creams. That's right. There's not one. There's two water beer ice creams. This is the hard pack ice cream that you can get here at Three Room Six, obviously, as well as Leaky Cauldron. And sometimes there's little carts that sell this as well in both lands. You can also get here chocolate, vanilla, and my favorite of the Florian Fortescue's ice creams, which is the strawberry peanut butter. I don't see spoon so fork it is now the difference again between this and the ice cream cone of Florian Fortescue's that you can get over at Diagon Alley spoiler, is that this is more hard pack ice cream and that is straight up soft serve. Cheers. I've never had this before. I've had the soft serve before, but I've never gotten it in the little cup. I actually like it. It's not real hard pack like the strawberry peanut butter is when you get it at Florian Fortescue's. It's definitely softer than that. It's somewhere between what I think of hard pack and soft serve. It's definitely sweet, obviously it's butterbeer and ice cream, but unlike the potted cream, the consistency is way better, and it's not so sickly sweet, like, you can taste more of the ice cream flavor, like it, it tastes like they swirled vanilla and butter scotch ice cream together, which is probably what they did. On the butterbeer scale, I'm gonna give this one a Remus Lupin. It's a little bit underrated, but it's very dependable, and you can definitely rely on this to be delicious, and that's about an eight. Yeah, just look at this nice picture of a hippogriff as you throw your trash away. Another thing I like is that this comes with like a little lid. And while this is cardboard and I probably wouldn't keep that, I might keep this lid and see if it fits any of my other Tupperwares at home. The rest of my ice cream and I are going outside because I think the Death Eaters are coming. 
I did a whole Harry Potter Halloween video that I encourage you to check out. It's so fun. Uh, the Death Eaters come out in the evenings and roam the streets and you can duel with them. There's also a projection show on Hogwarts Castle that happens a few times a night. It's one of my favorite things Universal does all year long. Uh, so yeah, I did plan to shoot this video when I could see it. Hello, I'm a Slytherin. Oh, he's mad. <laughs> Headed into my last location here in Hogsmeade. We are going into Honeyduke's candy shop. Now there is a candy shop over in Diagon Alley as well called Sugar Plums and it's adorable and pink, but Honey Dukes is the one they talk about a lot in the books. It's the one that the kids all go to and it's just the bigger and more fun candy shop in my opinion. All that to say, the shops sell mostly the same things, but there's sometimes a bigger and better selection here in Honey Dukes. But we're going to go ahead and jump in line because what I need is in the bakery case. The bakery cases have some of my favorite Wizarding World treats, including the pumpkin cake, the ginger newt cookie, and the pumpkin pasty. Those are three of my favorites, but today we have our eyes on one thing and one thing only. You already know what we're about to get. Butterbeer number six, fudge. Another treat I've never had. In the bakery cases, they have a variety of fudge, um, but I usually go for one of those other treats. However, I am very obsessed with the fact that it looks like butterbeer in the sense that it has like the frosting top and then the caramel covered bottom. It's weird. There's that I don't know that I would know this is butterbeer flavored if I didn't buy it. I know it was butterbeer flavored. Like if you handed me this, it was like what flavors is fudge? I might say caramel. I might say butterscotch, but I don't it's not distinctly butterbeer. It's like not strong enough. Hello. Would you like some fudge? No? I'll share. Even he didn't like it. For the fudge, on the butterbeer scale, I'm gonna give it a Neville Longbottom because I want it to be more. I want it to be better. Like, Neville's such a great character, but you want more of him. You wanna learn more about him. And I just feel like that's how I feel about this butterbeer fudge. It's not bad, I keep eating it. It's quite delicious. It's just not distinctly butterbeer. It doesn't know what it is. Kind of like Neville's non-corporal Patronus. So on, this, on the numbers though, that's about a six. Definitely better than the than the cream, but nowhere near as good as the drink was. Right. No, get back, get back. No, 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 no. Had a few more Death Eater encounters, but now Islands of Adventure is closed and I'm headed back to Diagon Alley. Made it back into Diagon Alley for our seventh and final Horcrux. I mean Butterbeer of the day. It's Halloween Horror Nights, which means Diagon Alley is a lot less crowded than it was earlier. And since I have a frequent fear pass, I can come in and just come to Diagon Alley. It's basically a dream come true. Florian Fortescue's ice cream parlor is the ice cream shop portrayed in Diagon Alley. It's particularly prominent in the third Prisoner of Azkaban as Harry stays in Diagon Alley for a few weeks before school starts and Florian himself helps him with his homework and gives him free sundaes. Here at Florian Fortescue's you can get all kinds of delicious ice cream treats. They have a variety of hard pack ice cream such as salted caramel blondie, clotted cream, earl grey and lavender, strawberry peanut butter, that's my personal favorite. They've got a bunch of soft serves as well, Granny Smith apple, mint toffee apple, but today we are of course getting the signature soft serve butterbeer. Here she is, lucky number seven butterbeer soft serve ice cream. You can get it in a souvenir cup or a waffle cone. What a good one to end on. First of all, I love a waffle cone. Who doesn't? A waffle cone tastes like a hug. It tastes like Leslie Nope would be proud of me right now. So, points for a waffle cone. 
But that's not the butter. It is super soft. It is super creamy. I don't always go for soft serve. I'm more of a hard pack ice cream kind of gal. But this is phenomenal ice cream. It's like the one ice cream I've tried in there that could possibly sway me for my beloved peanut butter strawberry. It's obviously so, so sweet, but much like the hard pack, it tastes not as artificial as the fudge. It's not as overly sugary as the fudge or the clotted cream. It tastes like ice cream, but then you've got that toffee, that caramel, that butterscotch flavor mixed in. All right, I'm kind of having a hard time ranking this because it's so, so delicious. On the butterbeer scale, I'm going to rank this a serious black because you don't think it's going to be as good. And then it's amazing, so much so that it outranks one of the beverages. That's about an 8.2 on this game. Well, friends, that's a wrap. I ate all seven different kinds of butterbeer today. My heart is pounding a million miles a minute, but here is our, your final tally of the butterbeer champions. Now, for Molly's personal top three, it is a little bit different. For me, hot is number one then the uh, ice cold, and then the ice cream. Those are my top three, but as far as which ones you should try, I feel like most people are gonna enjoy the frozen the most, but the hot does warm you up right inside. But no matter what, you can't really go wrong with butterbeer, unless of course you're that potted cream. Let me know which flavor of butterbeer you wanna try. Let us know what other food challenges you wanna see down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. It's too magical, quite delicious. Now go watch my Secrets of Wizarding World of Harry Potter video. I need a cheese burger.